So now we're going to work on a problem that we've seen some of the question before, but we'll apply it to the new concept. So if you remember when it comes to working with IQ scores, it's been dis established that the average IQ score is 100 and the standard deviation for this IQ exam is 16. Question A asks to find the probability, so I know I'm going to be using the table and my answer is going to be in the middle of the table, that a randomly selected person has an IQ score of 108 or higher. So first thing is always, I like to draw the picture. I center it over 100 because that's my average and 108 is the score I want to find. Of course, you don't have to draw the picture, but it did say 108 or higher. So am I in the shade to the left or the right? Correct, I'm in the shade to the right. And now I need to start working on it. Whether you drew the picture or not, you're gonna start here. I'm dealing with the probability of a single person. So that means I use z equals x minus mu over sigma. My single person score minus the average over the standard deviation. So plugging in the numbers I've got here, I get 0.5. So I need to use the z table, and I look at 0.5 on the positive table, and I get 0.6915. Now we've talked about that's more than 50%, and if you notice, I didn't shade the whole right half of the table, so my answer should be less than 50%. Because remember, the number I just looked up gave me area to the left. For area to the right, I have to take the complement, 1 minus 0.6915 to get 0.3085, which is my answer. And when I change it to a percent with one place to the right of the decimal, I get 30.9%. So there's a 30.9% chance that if you were to walk up to any person and ask what their IQ is, assuming they've used this test, that their score is 108 or higher. But now let's look at part B. We're asked to find the probability that the average IQ score of 25 people is 108 or higher. So the questions look the same. They both ask for 108 or higher. So I still have a bell-shaped curve centered over 100 where 108 is the score I want. It's still or higher, so I still shade to the right. But the twist here is I'm working with a group average, specifically 25 people. So the first question asked for a single person. The next one asked for a group of people, 25 to be exact. So this means I have to use X, I'm sorry, my Z score needs to be X bar. So not a single person, but a group average data. I still subtract from mean, and this time my standard deviation gets adjusted for working with a group. So as I go to plug in the numbers I have, 108 minus 100 all over 16. Don't forget that 16 gets divided by the square root of the sample size. Now I have no clue how many samples of size 25, I'm sorry, how many samples, yeah, of size 25 there are in the world because I don't even know what the population is. Are we using the United States, California, just this school? Bottom line is we divide by the square root of n, the sample size that we took, and we only took a sample of 25 people, so that's what I need to divide by the square root of. And I end up getting 2.5. So when it was one person, they were only half a standard deviation above average, but when it's a group, they're two and a half standard deviations above average. And then following that same process, I go to my z table, look up 2.50, Again, get a huge number, which means most of the graph should be shaded, but it's not. This gave me area to the left, which is most of the graph. I want area to the right. So I take the complement and get 0 .0062. As I change that to a percent with one place to the right of the decimal, my answer is 0.6%. This means that if I go grab one person and I check their ID, their ID, their IQ, and the chance that it's 108 or higher, I've got a 30%, 31% chance, almost a third. But if I take a group of 25 people, add up all their IQs, divide by 25 people, there's only a 0.6, less than 1% chance that that average would come out to be 108 or higher. And let me kind of help try to explain this a little further. Let's look at this first. When it came to working with a single person, 
we had a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. But when we worked with a group of 25, we had an average, sorry about that, we had an average of 100, but because our standard deviation had to be adjusted for our sample size, the standard deviation is only 3.2. Now let's look at that visually. Over here, when I'm talking about my single person, if I drew my bell-shaped curve centered over 100, and I went one, two, three standard deviations to the right to about where the graph closes off, if I was to jump by 16s, then my first standard deviation out would be 116. Add 16 to get 132. Add 16 to get 148. So to the edge of this bell-shaped curve, I could see IQ scores as high as 148. But when I go to do this with our group of 25 people, my bell-shaped curve centered over 100 with three standard deviations to the right, when I go to add that first standard deviation, I'm only adding 3.2. So I'm going to be at 103.2. If I add 3.2 again, I'm going to be at 106.4. And again, 109.6. So this is a difference of my curve going all the way over to 148 versus just shy of 110. And remember, we were looking for a score of 108. 108, if you look, it's halfway between the mean and the first z-score. That's why we got 0.5, because it's halfway over the first standard deviation. When we go to find 108 on the right side over here, 108, it's way far to the right. It's halfway between the second and third standard deviations. That's why we got 2.5 for our z-score. So what ends up happening is once you have an av a group, they average each other out, and somebody with a really high IQ score is going to be balanced by somebody with a really low IQ score. And so groups tend to really cluster close. You know, 109, that's barely halfway over to where we were one standard deviation away on this one. But So they tend to cluster right around the mean.